My name is Kain Tony Genius and today I'm going to explain to you in very flat times what is probability density. We understand what probability is, but the question is what is probability density? So let's assume you pick a coin. You know a coin has two sides. We have the tail and we have the head. So you flip this coin 10 times and you have tail 4 times and head 6 times. You repeat again. This time you have five tails and five heads. I repeat it again, you have two tails and eight heads. You repeat again, you have three heads, so three tails, seven heads. You repeat it again, you have, let's say, nine, nine tail, one head. You repeat again, you have four, six, six, four, and so on. So after carrying this experiment, you want to check the probability of getting a head. In this case, it will be 0 0.6, in this case is 0 0.5, in this case is 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.1, and so on. So now you see that it doesn't have exactly the same probability of getting ahead if you carry out this experiment several times. But the point is, if you take the average of all of these, it will likely be about 0 0.5. So what it means is that if we plot this, let's say, on a histogram, I hope I'll draw it correctly, okay? If you plot it on a histogram, let's say, so you have, let's say this is the probabilities, and this is when you have a head. So these probabilities, if you plot it, you will have something like this. Okay? So what it simply means is that the probability of getting a head is about this the probability of getting a head is about 0 0.5 because it is the probability of getting a head and let's say this is when you have a head. So is approximately 0 0.5. So why did I do this? I do this to help you understand what a distribution is. So when you have different probabilities plotted in a graph or plotted in a histogram or in any kind of chart, what you have is probability distribution. Probability distribution is when you plot a graph of the probability against the values the probability can take. So in this case, we have 0 up all the way to, to 1, somewhere here. But here we have these probabilities can only be between 0 and 1. Now we've talked about, in this case, head and tail. We have only two values that this probability can take. Or these values can take. It can only take two values. What if you want to go to measure the height of students in a school? What is the probability that you get somebody that have a height of 5.5 feet? Well, it's possible you can have 5.6, 5.5. 0, 5.53, 5 5.504, 4. 4. 4.993. So you have several values, but probability that you get an exact value of the measurement of somebody's height without any single decimal point will actually be close to zero. Hardly would you get a probability, uh, a height of exactly a particular point, let's say uh, 5.00 without having anything added to it because sometimes there may be some error in the measurement or then even the measuring instrument might have an error so you may have you may actually have 5.001 you may have 4.999 to the best to the closest range you can have to 5. so what it means since we have that probability of having a particular value in case of the height is close to zero, we call this kind of uh, values continuous uh, variable because they have indefinite or infinite range it can take. Height of people can take infinite range, uh, it, it doesn't have uh, a particular set of values it can take, it's have indefinite amounts. Even if it's between 4 and 5, there is infinite range of, of values that could be between 4 and 5. So in that case, if you also plot it, Let's say what is the probability of, of having a height of 5 feet 
We also can have a distribution. And that distribution will also, might also take something like this. Now, when we are carrying out a random experiment or measuring people's height at random or throwing out a coin at random, it's called a random experiment and it always follows a normal distribution, meaning that the probability will be some average, will be tending toward some average. But in the case of heights, in the case of continuous variable, in this case we have discrete. In the case of uh, coins, plus in a coin, we have discrete variable. In the case of height, we have continuous. Okay, now remember that everything I'm saying is specified clearly in my website, so you can always read it up if you have if you miss out anything on what I'm saying. So now when we now talk about this is the probability of the of get of the height, and this is the height itself. So what we can do is to say that we can have the probability of the height being between four and five. So we can have the probability that the height uh, between four feet and five feet. So this will make more sense than saying what is the probability of having a height of 5.000 or exactly five. So we can have a range maybe five and four or four, between four and five, between five and six or between 5.5 .5 and 6.0. So in that case, we have a range of values. For instance, we have in this case, we have A is equal to 4 and B is equal to 5. Now the probability density is gotten from plotting this on the probability distribution from A to, to B. So we are trying to find out the probability between A and B because it's continuous. So we want to use a range of values. Okay. So that probability, if you have something like a square, let's say you have something like this, of course you know that the area of this uh, the area of this place kind of gives you the, the, the quantity you are looking for or the density as it were. So let's call this P of H, and let's call this between A and B. So it means that we are probability density simply refers to the area between the two ranges, right? Good. So I could just uh, write it in calculus form, because in this case, we cannot do without using calculus. So we can say that probability uh, let me use something a bit uh, lighter. So let's, let's use it. Okay, so we are, we are calculating the probability that the height falls between, can say something like the height falls between A and B. That is what we are looking for. So it's simply going to be probability of the height times the difference in height. So let's call this the H. So that will give us integrating between A and B from A to B, we have P of H, the H. So basically we are multiplying P of H times H. More, more like the same way we are multiplying this place times this place. But in this case, we are now taking a very small range of value. So between A and B could actually be very small. So writing it in another term, writing it in a different, let me use a different color. So probability density is, is given like this, probability of X taking two values, A between A and B, equals integral from a to b probability of x the x so this is what is called the probability density 
Now, P of X is the probability density function, right? So this is about probability density. Always think of it as taking the area between two ranges in a continuous variable. I'm going to stop here, and I also want to refer you to my website where everything is explained clearly. So if you miss out something, you can always have it here in my website. I'd like to thank you for viewing. If this has been informative for you, please click on the subscribe button below this video and feel free to like this video. And also let me know if there are some recommendations you need me to put in place.